Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and today we're celebrating National Beer Day. Um, as you know, uh, Discover History like to be topical. For example, when there's a national day on Twitter, uh, when there is an international day or something like that, you will probably find us running with that theme. So today is National Beer Day. You will see that all over Twitter. So we thought we'll have a little bit of a chat about uh, beer, uh, alcohol in general, and more importantly, why people were not drinking cups of tea as we do often today, especially in Britain. So if you think about it, beer that we know and love in more modern times is actually not that old when it comes to being drunk in Britain. Saying that, beer is probably the one of the oldest drinks that we have in the whole world. For example, we do know that the ancient Egyptians and even some of the other uh, peoples from that area, including places like Mesopotamia, uh, were drinking beer going back thousands and thousands of years. Um, we usually talk about beer when we do a talk or even a school workshop on ancient Egypt because we definitely know the Egyptians were drinking it. Um, I find it absolutely fascinating that the Egyptians drank beer through a straw. Now that must have been quite an amusing sight. Well it would be from a, a modern person's point of view. However in an Egyptian point of view, in an ancient Egyptian world, that would have seen as normal. The main reason for that was the fact that they used bread uh, in a way to activate, uh, it, it was the yeast addition really to the manufacturing of beer. So when you look at ancient Egyptian beer it would have had a lot of sediment in it and probably had things floating all the way through it not just on the surface but all the way through it. So we know that they would have taken very simple clay cups like this one here. Uh, we've actually got an Egyptian maker's mark on this one here. Uh, not an original by the way and then they would have had a straw that sat in it that they would have sucked up the beer with and that would have actually filtered out all the rubbish that was in it. Um, we have actually got examples of straws that were made of metal and they have a tiny little sieve or covering at the bottom so they could put that in, suck up the beer without coughing and spluttering on all the other rubbish that's in it. So even though I said at the very start beer is not that old in Britain it's been around for a very long time. Can you imagine Tutankhamun drinking his beer through a straw, by the way? So we definitely know it was around for a very, very long time. But when does it come to Britain? Well, it doesn't come to Britain really until the Middle Ages, proper beer that is. Um, so what were we drinking as an alternative to beer? Well, I can tell you now, we definitely didn't drink the water. Uh, if you're lucky and you have a spring, for example, Worcester, where we are from, we have, uh, in, in one case, the most famous one is the springs on the Malvern Hills there. And uh, if you've got that sort of water, then maybe you could drink it. But generally speaking, people knew the dangers of drinking water. And that's really down to the fact that even with a spring, if you're not getting it from the source of the spring, you don't know if there's a dead animal further upstream that's died in it and polluting the water. Um, most people didn't touch the water full stop because it was really, really contaminated. By the Victorian period, it was full of everything. One of the reasons why Parliament shut down was the Great Stink because the Thames became a mass open sewer covered in thousands and thousands of flies, maggots and all sorts of things. It must have been absolutely horrific. Every waterway was used and every waterway was contaminated with one thing or another. Um, so people didn't have water. People preferred other things. They knew uh, it wouldn't kill them. Uh, they didn't know the science behind it, but they knew it wouldn't kill them. So most people in the past, especially in Britain, drank uh, what was available to them in the locality. And that could be cider made from apples. It could be perry made from pears, but more common, and this is the great old English tradition, was actually ale. 
ale was one of the drinks that we drank the most in the past. If you go back even into Anglo-Saxon Britain, even Iron Age Britain, it was ale. Ale could be produced relatively easily. Uh, most families, even up to the Victorian period, were often making their own ale. The only problem about ale is you had to consume it relatively quickly because it does go off. And that's the bonus of beer. By the medieval period, when we have beer, the hops that give it the bitter taste actually preserves the beer, makes it last longer. So you can see why we switch from ale over to beer. So if we look at Britain, uh, imagine ale drinking in the Iron Age, for example. It could be from a simple cup like this one, a simple bowl type cup, sometimes referred to as a mazer when you get to the Middle Ages. This one's made of wood. Some of them are also made of pottery. I've even got an Anglo-Saxon cup here. Uh, the type of thing, very basically made, very crude, made out of pot. Uh, and this would be used to drink in your ale out of. Um, you may be wondering why I haven't mentioned wine. We know the Romans had wine, for example. Medieval people had wine. Anglo-Saxons had wine. But generally speaking, wine was a drink for the upper classes. So if we're talking about the average person, it's usually ale, cider, or perry. That's the general drinks of the time. No water, remember. So we definitely know that beer came from uh, ancient Egypt uh, and, and that area, and that goes back way back in history. But when it came to Britain, it's not really until the Middle Ages. So when it does actually arrive, uh, people start drinking it alongside the perry, the cider and the ale. So it, it, it's being consumed at the same rate. And by the Middle Ages, a lot of cups uh, look like this, uh, which is what they're drinking their beer out of. Uh, so a very simple beaker made out of wood. Or obviously, uh, you wouldn't uh, get very drunk on such a small helping. There was also bigger containers. Um, we have here uh, a big uh, tankard as as such really made out of cow's horn this one it has a wooden stopper in the bottom and what they've actually done is boiled the cow's horn and whilst it's been soft they've actually bent it over to create a handle uh, and this would have been used for drinking the beer out of horn the uh, the plastic of the past as I always call it really fantastic stuff we should be using horn more uh, it's a byproduct uh, you eat the meat you have the blood you make use of the cow skin uh, why not use the horn as well we used everything years ago no wasted whatsoever but a very traditional cup used in the Middle Ages uh, were these big pottery ones, a bit more refined from the earlier Anglo-Saxon type and usually with a glaze on the inside to make it very, very waterproof. And we find these in the archaeological record quite a bit, mainly because when they break, they're relatively cheap to replace. So you just get another one, really. But then when we pass over from the medieval into the Tudor, we definitely know by the Tudor period, beer is becoming the main drink over ale. So ale, cider and perry are down here. Wine right down at the bottom because it's only being consumed by the upper classes. They're the only ones that can afford it. Beer is now taking hold. Beer is the big drink by the Tudor period. And most people are drinking it out of uh, pottery cups, maybe leather ones that I showed you just the other day, stitched together like a pair of shoes uh, and then lined with, uh, for example, uh, bitumen. It could even have beeswax in there, depending on what you have for money, basically. And then one of my favourites is this one. And this one is made in exactly the same way as you would make a barrel. In other words, you have individual staves and then you have the wood holding this whole thing together. Now, what you do find in a lot of period tankards uh, is a lot of them do have lids and there's a reason behind that really. It's down to the fact that years ago people didn't have a ceiling. Now that sounds a bit odd to us today but if you think back to most homes if you sat in your main room and for most people you only had one room you would be literally looking up at the beams of your roof and if you have a thatch roof for example where there are all sorts of things living in it from birds down to uh, rats and mice 
when they're scurrying around all day, all sorts of rubbish falls in your drink and no one wants bits in their drink. So a lot of tankards throughout history have had lids on and that's literally to keep them safe from little mice or mice droppings dropping into it. You don't want to be drinking extras when you have a beer. But then when you get into the 17th century and into the 18th century, uh, really we go back to using clay. Uh, pottery again and this is a fine 17th century slipware cup and as you can read on this one excuse the spelling there was no dictionaries so you spell however you want obey the king and you can sit there in your pub drinking away your beer with a cup like that I also find you get, uh, it's really interesting when you start having a look at beer tankards, for example, from this era, especially in the 18th and 19th centuries, because the clay tankards often have political cartoons on them, or in this case, some sort of text on it. And this goes to show that people were learning to read and write more. We often think of people in the Civil War, for example, in the 17th century as being uh, a, a people that can't read or write. We know that a lot more people than we thought could actually read and write, which is one of the reasons why you've got writing on cups. But I've seen some fantastic cups uh, commemorating, for example, uh, the Battle of Trafalgar, uh, where you would have a, a picture on the front uh, showing a, a ship, for example, or even Lord Nelson. And that's quite interesting and relevant for Worcester because by 1750s, uh, we have Royal Worcester Porcelain. And believe it or not, tankards in pubs could also be made out of bone china. And they're brilliant because you can paint all sorts of political cartoons on them. But then eventually, by the late 17th century into the 18th century, if you're going for a beer, it's usually quite common to have it in one of these tankards, a pewter tankard. However, made more of lead than the tin. Pewter is a tin and lead mix. There's a lot of lead in this. So when you're having your beer in these, uh, especially things like cider even, uh, it's sucking the lead out. Uh, but no one was really too bothered. Life was short years ago anyway. You do get the odd one or two living old, but generally life's short, so you might as well enjoy yourself. But tankers like this was the norm uh, and often ran alongside, for example, the china ones or the pottery ones, or in some cases, even the clay ones. So they often run alongside. But by this period, the army uh, and the Navy were often in pubs trying to press gang people, which is why one final little touch I'd like to add here. You often had glass bottoms. The glass bottom was so you can have a quick look underneath to make sure there's no king shilling in it before you down it. Because if you down it and there's a shilling in the bottom and you touch it, Unfortunately, you're now in the Army or the Royal Navy. So it's so important to have a quick glance at the bottom. But then eventually, by the Victorian period and beyond, the glass comes in. You can sit in a pub and have a good glass of beer. Anyway, on that note, enjoy National Beer Day. Um, I'm sure you're going to be using a completely different cup than what I've got. So one final thing to say is stay safe. We'll see you tomorrow and cheers.